per definizione del tuo nome. Cambi la guardia per il padre, usi la guardia del padre, su in San Diego, non sa, tu ti metti in quanti che hai detto. Anche in questo goodness, is love, is mercy, is kindness on each and every one of us. Thank you most of all for this opportunity to present this divine vision and revelation to each and every one. At this time, we encourage and we invite each and every one to be a part of this divine lecture today. Hoping that you will come to a consciousness and a proper knowledge and understanding of who your creator is and how as he actually exists and what he expects of you and I in this dispensation of age that we are living in. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research Incorporated. This is a school and it's not a church and neither are we affiliated to any other religious or scientific organization. This is a non-profit, non-denominational, religious and scientific organization. Founding based on a spiritual or divine vision and revelation given to us by Yahweh Elohim himself through the body of the Lamb of God, Henry Peter Kelly, in the state of Ohio in the year 1900 and 21. Your school is set up here established in Forest Green, Trinidad, and I'm in the school of Richard Lee and Dr. Peter Walker. In this school, we preach and we teach using the true, correct, original, and only name of the Lord and Heaven Father, which is Yahweh. The word of Son, which is Elohim, and the name of the Holy Spirit, which is Yahshua, as contained in the original Hebrew manuscripts. When scripture translators or Bible translators came upon the true divine name of the Heaven Father, which is Yahweh, they wrongly gave us the common title of the Lord. When they came across a true divine first title for the word of Son, which is Elohim, the wrong to insert the common title of God. And when they came across the true name of the Holy Spirit, which is the Ashura, whether manifested in or out of a physical body, they gave us the pagan tragedy of Jesus Christ. Lord of God. They are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 states, For though they are either the four gods, spelled with an X, showing that there are many of them, whether these words are in heaven or in earth, as their words many and words many. Each Lord must have a name, and each God must have a name also. So the question one should ask oneself, what is the name of the created world? Seeing that Lord and God are titles and not names. In the Greek mythology, there are many gods. You have Hercules, the god of strength, Neptune, the sea god, and Venus, we have the god of love. So we have Neptune, Venus, and Hercules at the name. God is a type of the world of death. In England, there is a place called the House of Lords. And at the House of Lords, there are such lords as Lord Baltimore, Lord Snow, Lord Chesapeake, Chesapeake, and Lord Hugh. Baltimore, Snow, and Chesapeake are their names, Lord of the type of stood of death by the monarch of England. Jesus is a name, which is an erroneous or shalom name. My investigation on your part into a good on a British dictionary on Cyclopedia. You come across these for the talks to yourself. The topic is in the Hebrew language or characters or symbols. There are no characters or symbols in Hebrew. 
when transliterated letter to letter, some, some symbol to symbol, comes close to or resemble that of the English word J. There is no J in the Hebrew, Arabic, or characters up to this day. Neither is there the J in the Greek, Arabic, the Latin Arabic, the Russian Arabic, or the German Arabic, especially around the time of the same world and the creed of the world. A further investigation on your part into the letter J, revealing that the letter J came into existence for the first time on the face of the earth within the 17th century, 17, 18, 19, 20, which means the letter J has 400 years in its total existence on the face of the earth. In other words, there was no J, not the sound of the letter J, no part of it in the world or no language in the world until the 17th century, which is 400 years ago. Bear in mind what you say in the world, he wore this earth in 2,000 years ago, and the letter changed only 400 years. So if you take the 400 from the 2,000, you get 1,600 years or 1,600 years. So it took 1,600 years after the birth of Yahshua the Messiah, after the fulfillment of his ministry, after his death, burial, resurrection, you are called the Holy Spirit. And your are also going to preach and teach in his name. It took 1,600 years after all those events for your Bible translators to remove the name of Yahshua from the Bible and give you Jesus. Also, the first man that we are revealed his name to was a man called Moses at the backside of Mount Sinai. And that took place some 4,000 years ago. And the letter changed only 400 years. So when you take the 400 from the 4,000, you get 3,600 years. So you took 3,600 years after Yahweh revealed his name to Moses at the backside of Mount Sinai. And after Yahweh helped give Moses and the children of Israel commandments to honor his holy name. It took 3,600 years after that for your Bible translator. In translating your Bible from Hebrew to English, you remove the name. So it was impossible back there for any holy name to start with a letter J. So it was impossible for the previous name to be called Jehovah. When you examine the name Jesus, J is originally Ivy. When pronounced, it is pronounced E or Le, which is the name of the Babylonian God. The fact that the name S U S comes from Z U S U S, the Supreme Court of the Greeks, and Christ, which is a title come from Krishna, the Hindu son of which is the worship of the physical sun that you see in the skies of the interior heavens. So right within the name of Jesus, and the title Christ, we have a Babylonian God, the Holy, a Greek God, Zeus, and a Hindu God coming from Krishna. Tripagan gods of Tripagan or different nationalities. The true correct original and only name of God my heavenly father is Yahweh. The name Yahweh comes from the original Hebrew text of Amazon. Text of meaning four, one, two, three, four. And Ramadan representing these four characters or symbols in Hebrew. Which are your name or name. 
The Hebrew language is a consonantal language in that they do not use the aid of vowels to make their words pronounceable. So as represented by these four characters in Hebrew, it is pronounced Yahweh by the Hebrew speaking people. The Hebrew language is read from right to left. Unlike that of the English language that is read from left to right. So when the Hebrew text of Ramadan is transliterated, letter to letter, song for song, symbol for symbol, this is a Y, this is an H, this is a W, and this is an H. In order to make the Hebrew text of Ramadan pronounced by Yahweh in English, as it is pronounced Yahweh by the Hebrew speaking people, we as English speaking people, we need the aid of our words to make our words pronounceable. And these words are A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y, taking the place of Y. Through this divine vision and revelation, it was revealed in order to know which power to use and where to place it. One must go to the first man, Adam, that was drawn out of the Virgin Mother Earth, using the only power in his name, which is the A. Placing it between the Y and the H to make pronounceable Yah, the master and the of our Heavenly Father's name. You're further instructed to go to the first woman Eve that was drawn out of the man Adam, using the Holy Ghost in her name, which is the E, placing it between the W and the H to make pronounceable way the feminine portion of our Heavenly Father's name. You are my Heavenly Father, whose true, correct, original, and only name is God, is both male and female in principle, right to himself. And we be his offspring, we can testify that this is true, because right in our physical bodies, whether we be man or woman, we possess both male and female plants or bones. The male gland of hormone that is in everybody's body is called androgen, symbolized by A, showing proof that the A is correctly given between the Y and the H to make the known to the Y, the masculine portion of our Heavenly Father's name. The female gland of hormone that is in everybody's body is called estrogen. Symbolized by E, showing proof that the E is correctly placed between the W and the H to make much the way the feminine portion of our Heavenly Father's name. So you are my Heavenly Father, whose true, correct, original, and only name is Yahweh. It both male and female right within himself, and he has made mankind, each and every one of us, with the same male and female forms right in us to testify of it. In a manner, there's a greater percentage of androgen and a smaller percentage of estrogen. In a female, there's a greater percentage of estrogen and a smaller percentage of androgen. Testifying to your who is both male and female in principle right in the middle of the cell. And we are both. We have both male and female plants right at the next. Elman, which is the word of sound, is Yahweh's divine pluralistic type. Elman is a divine type that Yahweh chose himself, unlike that of Lord and Lord. And he had in Hebrew theology, it means Yahweh. So there's a relationship between Yahweh and the Lord and Yah and Yah. When you turn the Bible, it's a so called John 543. The same in the world when he came into his ministry, it states, I am come in my Father's name. And you will see me not. If another, or let another come in his own name, if we will receive. 
from a natural standpoint of the natural child, when it is built into this creation, takes on the natural surname of the natural parent of the father. If that parent of the surname is Smith, Jones, or Lewis, that child automatically is called Smith, Jones, or Lewis. Likewise, the same with work. He said, I am coming my father's name. So he has compared the masculine portion of the heavenly father's name, which is the other. So he has to come in here somehow. And the next part of his name, which is pronounced sure, in Hebrew theology, it means salvation. So his name is Yah Shua. Yah is short form for Yahweh, and Shua meaning salvation. However, we were not brought up or educated to accept the know that the true name of the Savior the Lord was Yahshua. According to your translated versions of the Bible, we will find it to say that Jesus is the Savior of the world. So let us be open minded. Let us be broad minded. Let us examine and see if there is any slight possibility that the Savior is going to be Jesus. Although we don't establish the fact that there is no tree in him, nor the son of the letter tree in him, and the answer was about him. But we skip that. And we go on to show. If Jesus being the same in the world, and the scripture said, Jesus is saying, I am coming my father's name. The next question we have to examine to Jesus, what is the father's name? Because a part of your name is your father's name, or your family's surname. So when you say the Peter's name is Lord, not only is God a title and not a name, but when you get into the etymology, the root meaning of where the term Lord has come from, you will find the originated one. You will find that the term Lord has come from Adonai. It has come from Moloch. It has come from Baal. And Baal has its origination from Jezebel, the prince of demons. Or you might be more acquainted with him as Lucifer, the servant, the devil. So that term Lord is not a new century. Spiritually, see, it is coming straight from the, the devil itself. It's one of the other ways, a social way, of calling on the devil. Without you and I being conscious of it. And there is no resentment between Lord and Jesus to say he has come in his father's name. What about God? Tell us if Peter's name is God. See, God is your society. But when we get into the etymology or where the term God has come from, we see the Syrian, the German things it, and spell it G-O-T-T. The Assyrian word it from the German and spell it G-A-W-D, and the English word it from the Assyrian and spell it G-O-D. And when you read from right to there, you see it's not a holy. But if I go into it a little more, she you will find out that this too also brings you right back to Benjamin. Or bring you back to Bula. So, Lord and Lord is consistent in your original meanings coming from Belgica or Mula. Some say the Creator's name is Jehovah. See, there is no example of the God and Jesus. Some people say that the Creator's name is Jehovah. No change either. See, and you say that if Jesus said he has come in his Father's name, and his Father's name is Jehovah, what resentment we have with Jehovah and Jesus, 
none whatsoever. Although the world starts to spread with the tree, see, you will have to be able to delay the spelling to prevent it very close. You have to manipulate it. See, since I'm pointing that out, they should try to manipulate it a little bit to see if you can get Jesus and the whole world so come close to one another. So there's no resentment between Jesus and Jehovah saying he has come in his father's name. Now the question is, where did they get Jehovah from? What did they the change around the text of one John from Y in his navigation to J H P H and they used the Roman bones of Pragmatic, and that's how we reconstruct. And you get this to Jehovah. And if you look into a good on a rich dictionary on encyclopedia, and you look up the name Jehovah or the term Jehovah, you most likely will come to the explanation that Jehovah is a modern sacred name for God. So it's not the original name of the created the world. And if you tell you see how at least the one I looked into told me that was written inside of it, see how. See, and there's no resemblance between Jehovah and Jesus. Some say Creator's name is Allah. And Allah. So if we examine Allah and Jesus, there's no resemblance. Some say Buddha, likewise, there's no resemblance the Buddha and Jesus. So truly it is Yahshua, 2,000 years ago, saying, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. He said, let another come in his own name, if you will receive me. The world has to see Jesus come in his own name, and have rejected Yahshua coming in his Father's name. And in Acts 4 12, it tells us, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is not other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved, saving in the name of Yahshua and Yahshua Lord. Now let me turn your attention to this chart. This chart is called the Mosaic chart. And on this chart, Yahweh, which is close to it, is symbolized on this chart. As a God. But the Yahweh is no spirit state is not a God. We only use this cloud to make the Yahweh see that a God has no reasonable shape at all. Let us hold this out as an article of God. Extend all the edges of this chart. And I will on this chart a back which is the orange and back of God. So to the principle of one like man, the spirit in the universe. And the sum total of this creation abides in the pure spirit state of the hour. Because Yahweh is the ultimate source, substance, Yahweh is the limits and the bounds of all things. It is within Yahweh which is pure spirit that we all live and move and have our being. As some of your words have said, for we are also Yahweh's possible. Yahweh knew that man could not perceive of him or understand him in his pure spirit state, put us right within himself. The thing of a super, incorporeal shape and form, that is, having the shape and form of a man. Yet, without flesh and blood, that he entitled Yahweh Elohim, which is the word of Son. Now, this great heavenly, Anthropomorphic meaning Yahweh Elohim is the archetype, or it is the original pattern of the universe. It is in Yahweh Elohim. In that same vision to Moses on top of Sinai, in the year 1490, you have shown Moses how he Yahweh Elohim is comprised in part or in totality of these nine divine principal attributes of Yahweh in an organized shape of God. 
with by wisdom and by knowledge, crowning and by intelligence. We buy love, we buy justice, we buy beauty, we buy vocation, we buy strength, and we buy God. And here we are, we have Moses to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. We call Moses on the top of Sinai, where we are with the Lord, instantaneously transformed himself into the street road, Torrey Polish, Tabernacle Fire, or Sanctuary in that prison which consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court of the Lord. One, two, three compartments, but one tabernacle of life. We go over to this school to prove that everything in the universe is made as operates and is dictated according to the structure and function of this divine tabernacle of life, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Yahweh could only be seen in divine vision and sometimes accompanied by divine revelation, as was given to the so called John on the Isle of Athens in the year 1896, in which he wrote in the so called Thomas and John chapter 1, beginning at the first verse, which states, In the beginning was the word. And the word was with the hour. And the word was the hour. Same was in the beginning with the hour. All things was made by him. The hour was the And without him, the hour was the other was nothing made that was made. In him was life. And that life was and still is alive. Or the life of man. Finally, the hour was the Manifesting himself in a physical shape and form of a man, entitled the Ashwood of the Sabbath, who the religious or wrongly or ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. This is full of the right hand state of so called Book of Central, chapter 1, beginning at the 14th verse of space, and the word Yahweh Elohim was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. In this school, we have ten grand constitutional aims and objectives to follow. One, to help you find the reality of our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Two, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in the actual himself. Without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Three, they investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so called law of nature, and the powers of 1889. Four, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, they extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six to learn, know, and understand the operation of the hour's eternal purpose operating through the dispensation of ages. Seven to deserve and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the dragon, the devil, and Satan, and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eight to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Nine to make known that Yahweh from the beginning or day. There is no other name under heaven given among them whereby one can be saved, saving in the name of Yahshua and Yahshua Lord. And ten, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the beautiful state. Our watch with his peace and our slogan is to speak the truth.
for a scripture lesson this morning. We'll be taking from the so called St. John, the second chapter. And the third day, there was a marriage in Canaan. Or Canaan. Of Galilee. And the mother of Yasha was there. And both Yasha was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Yahshua said unto him, They have no wine. Yahshua said unto the woman, What have I to do with thee? My power is not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, what shall he said unto you do? And they will set their six water, water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, continuing to or three perkins apiece. Yahshua said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear him. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which through the, through the water knew, the governor of the feast, called the bridegroom, and said unto him, Every man at the beginning, at the beginning, do accept God to wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Yahshua and Canaan of Galilee. And manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. After this he went down to Caponia, he and his mother, and his brethren, and his disciples. And they continued there not many days. And the Jews' Passover was at hand. And Yahshua went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple there those that stood, that stood oxen and sheep and droves, and the changes of money, sitting. And when he had made his scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple, and the sheep, and the oxen, and poured out the chambers money, and overthrew the tables. And he said unto them, that soul droves, take these things hence. Make not my father's house and house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thy house had eaten me up. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, what sign shouldst thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Yahshua answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will rise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in the building, and will thou break it up on the third day? 
for the sake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scriptures and the word which Yahshua had said. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name, and when they saw the miracles which he did, but Yahshua did not make himself unto them because he knew all men, and he did not that any should testify of men, for he knew what was in man. Here ended so called St. John, the second chapter. What I want to do this morning is pick back up from the previous lecture that we were doing last last class. What we were doing in the last class, or what we were explaining about, if we, for those of you who could remember, we were working with the Passover in relation to Easter. And we have established the fact see, that in the Bible, see, no one was celebrating Easter in your Bible. And we established that the celebration of Easter has its origination or its roots. Full, full established in ancient pagan customs. So those who need to get the previous lecture do so. So in explaining the Passover, we went on to establish the fact that the Passover took place in Egypt before the children of Israel was delivered from the bondage that they were under in Egypt on the field. So this was already established. See? When Yah was set up that Passover memorial feast of supper with Moses and the children of Israel, see? And just to be accurate, some of the things to you. See, they were to take up the land on the 10th day of April. See, not any time they choose to. See, it must be a male land of the first year that they take it from the sheep or from the goat and pull it for four days. See, So the question is why they had to pull it over for four days. So it's easy to read the Bible and just repeat what's inside of it. But why did they have to pull it over for four days? See? No that land. Let me show you what about something about that land. In John, John, when he asked the Messiah, 
when the John's water baptism to be baptized of him. And he came, Yahshua came to John to be baptized of him. See? And John asked him, Have you sinned? Because what John was doing, he was baptizing or burying those dead Jews, spiritually dead Jews. They were physically alive, but they were spiritually dead. Where did they inherit that spiritual death now? They inherit that spiritual death from Adam. First man Adam. Because it looked at you as if Adam all died. All mankind spiritually died in the first man Adam. So if one could understand that, all the genealogies all the seeds of mankind was in that first man Adam. All generations of the face of the earth generated out of that physical first man Adam from a natural standpoint. So when he died spiritually, he brought all mankind who was in him in spiritual death or condemnation, although we did not do anything, or we didn't even know what he did, but we inherited that sin from the first man Adam. See? So that is why it necessitated the actual Messiah to come in to take that sin of mankind. See? So now John comes in on. See, when he came to John the Baptist. So that is why John was buried. Adam's fallen race. See? Because they inherited that sin. So everybody that was coming to John's water baptism, they had to confess the sins. And after they confess the sins, then they will be baptized. But remember, baptism is a symbol of a burial. See? The meaning of baptism, the spiritual meaning of baptism, is a burial. And says, so give me the proof of it. You go to Colossians, the second chapter, the 12th verse, and it says, buried with him in baptism. See? When also ye are risen with him to the, the faith of the operation of Elohim, who hath raised him from the dead. So showing you that baptism. Represent a spiritual burial. So that is why Yahshua the Messiah, when he came to John, John asked him, Have you seen? And he said, No. So that's how John realized, got to know, that he's the one that was spoken of in the law of the prophets. So what did John say? John replied to him, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. And the response that Yahshua the Messiah gave him, see, he said, suffer to be so long, John, see, and I'm just saying John because the name was not John, for you understand, his name was Yakan. See, he said, suffer to be so long, John, for thus it becometh us, John, to fulfill all righteousness. See? So even when he was 
being baptized, Yahshua the Messiah was not saying I mean, pick that in Matthew the third chapter, it's 11 years. See? And John the Baptist is saying, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is preferred. He that cometh after me is mightier than I. Whose shoes is I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So John, the one who told John the Baptist, he was baptizing the people with physical water because he was burying them. He's burying them spiritually. See, the spiritually had mankind had spiritually died from the first man and had. So he is burying them. See? But the same one who is baptizing them went on to say that Yahshua the Messiah is going to be baptizing people with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He never said Yahshua the Messiah or the one who called Jesus was going to baptize the people with water. See? And the 13th verse says, this is my treat treat your team. Then come the Yahshua from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of him. And comest thou to me. And Yahshua answered and said unto them, unto him, sorry, Suffer him to be soon now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. So when Yahshua the Messiah was being baptized, he did not say that he was setting up or establishing things. An example for anybody to call him. He didn't say that. What he said is fulfilling. For thus in becoming us, John, the two of us, which is the Holy Spirit in the one who called John the Baptist, and the Holy Spirit in the answer of the Messiah, fulfilling it, completing it to bring it to the end. And this is what I am trying to bring up course to you, the audience. That everything you see Yahshua the Messiah was doing in his ministry, everything, he was fulfilling the law of the prophets to complete it and to bring it to the end. Now, if you're still doing it, any of it, then what you really is testifying to that you do not believe that Jesus or Yahshua fulfilled the law and the prophets. In other words, when you say to John, you come to fulfill the word of baptism, by the demonstration of your, your manifestation of baptizing people in physical water, or what you call christening in some, in some parts, that you say in the actual Messiah life that he did not fulfill the word of baptism. See? That is what you really manifest in that you say that he, he didn't fulfill the word of baptism. And anything else that you are doing that was under the law and in the prophets and you find fashionable to do especially to make money, you are contradicting exactly what you're preaching. See? Because you say you believe in the Bible, and straight enough this morning, I'm reading to you from the Bible you have. 
a King James Version. I purpose, I'm purposely reading it from the King James Version because I don't want anyone to say, well, this is a special Bible he's reading from. And it is not in the Bible that the religious world normally will use. So that I'm using the King James Version. And that is what the Messiah is saying at his baptism, that he's fulfilling the word of baptism, which is to come in him and bring it in him. See? So now we have to desire, join unto God, remember me, he said, Behold the Lamb of Yahweh that taketh away the sins of the world. See? He called him the Lamb of Yahweh. That is what it's all about. That land of here in the law is representing the actual Messiah, who is the land of Yahweh, the perfect land. And he is the one that taking away the sin to the world. These lambs back here being sacrificed. See? And these animals are the sacrifice. for the sins of the children of Israel and the high priest and the cleansing of the sanctuary all those animals representing the actual Messiah which will come in and take the sins of the world on himself he was the one who ordained to do that none of these animals that were sacrificed was ordained to take away the sins of the world. It was never the purpose. See? So if we still sacrificing, making physical sacrifices of anything whatsoever, we are saying that we are ignorant of the fact that we are still desire to die for the sins of the world, which is a sin that the first man had brought in and pass on to all mankind. See? So that shows that land down here to pass over. See? It's prefiguring the answer to the Messiah, who is the Lamb of the Hour, who is going to die in the same set fashion that this Lamb was being killed. So when you go into the law and you go into the prophets, See, Ezekiel 45, 21, Ezra 6, 19, and few of them. We will tell you that they have this Passover on the 14th day of Aaron. See? And they have to take that lamb and hold it over for four days. See? Now, if you pay attention and you go to the beginning of the creation of the universe,
we take the first chapter of Genesis, and we go after the third day, which is the, the 14th verse. And Elohim said, you will have God. And Elohim said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So he said the light that is in the firmament, you see, of the heaven is to divide the day from the night. And they, he said let them, be, let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. He never said they have to be worshipped. He never said worship them. Hmm? That's what the Bible say. And you say you believe in the Bible. He said don't worship them. He said they are for signs, they are for seasons. They to separate the day from the night. That's what he said. And it was season and for days and for years. Fifteen verse. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven. To give light, light upon the earth. And it was so. And Elohim made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And Elohim set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light. From the darkness, and Elohim saw that it was so, it was good. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So if you pay attention to what the day is with Yahweh, it's an evening and a morning. It was the first day. See, so that's on the fourth day. So on the fourth day, Yahshua put the, the sun, the physical sun. He established the physical sun with us, the moon and the stars in the interior heavens on the fourth day. Not that physical sun. It is to tell us about the spiritual son of Yahweh, who is Yahshua himself. Because it takes the natural to understand the spiritual. See? So that physical son that was put in the sky, see, or in the interior heavens, was put on the forehead. So now we have the spiritual son, who is the son of Yahshua. Yahweh, who is Yahshua the Messiah, the spiritual son of Yahweh, he must appear on the fourth day. See? See, one day with Yahweh is a thousand years, and a thousand years is what? One day. So in the four thousand years, we see Yahshua the Messiah appear. So he must come in. On the fourth day. One day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is what? One day. So here he is, the son of Yahweh must come in just like a physical son of the king. He has to come in on in the four thousand years on the fourth day to take away the sins of the world. She should not in this happening have as a 
and the iniquity that taken place has taken place according to Yahweh's purpose, everything is purpose. See, so he's in the fourth day here, come to take away the sins of the world on the fourth day. See? So that man was standing over for four days, so he actually was out of the over. Standing over until the four thousand years. See? So now, he comes in. So this lamb, I keep telling you, this Passover memorial lamb is representing the Ashwood of Sacha. So he is the lamb of Yahweh that comes in and four thousand years of four days to take away the sins of the world. The world. So the first man had a lot of but his disobedience. So by the obedience of the Ashwood of Sacha, by fulfilling the law of prophets, nailing this cross, taking it out of the way, that is how we can is a mediator of the New Testament. That is why in his blood we are saved. Through this sacrifice we are saved. So here it is, he is the Lamb of God that taken away the sins of the world. So when we get there, he's fulfilling. See, all that he's doing is fulfilling. So when we talk about Good Friday, there's no such thing in your Bible. There's no such thing as Good Friday in your Bible anyhow. That is not made to us. See? So when it comes to the time we have to go inside the pulpit, he had to have to serve all of us who want to do peace with his disciples to get that one to go to the top of the way. So that is what we find in Matthew 26 chapter. And the others, Mark, that they will have to go. Who's your number? So that is why when he's there now, see, back in Egypt, we have to always go back there. They kill that lamb and they are sitting inside. See? So when he asks the Messiah, he gets his twelve. See, he gets his twelve disciples. And he's having that house of the memorial peace. And he's having it built. Is he having it in a synagogue? Is he having it in the church of his choice? No, he's having it when you read about it. He's having it in a house. Because back in Egypt, it was done in a house. It wasn't done in the church of the church. See? And when the Passover was done in Egypt, it was told, don't leave out of your house with it. Don't cry out of the house. See? So you couldn't cry out in the house and, and give it to somebody and say they're sick. So I'm giving him the Passover. No. Is every man in their house according to the eating? A lamb on the house. And if the house will be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor join their company. See, and it is a supper. A supper is a meal. See? And it's the lamb of the first year. It's not no old lamb. In other words, when Yahweh feed him, he feed it to the man. See? Not no old lamb. No, the best. When you are taking care of him, you get the best from him. When you are his own. No. No old lamb. A lamb of the first year. 
that is tender loins. Not something rubbery, you know, and pull out your teeth. So hard to pull out your teeth, you can't digest properly. See? Tender loins. Take it from the sheep or from the boat, hold it over the water. Four days. That's like that sun was in the sky and four days. Then he asked to come in and the court of the earth. Is that, is that lamb, is that son, is the son of God? See? So they had to kill that lamb, pierce it in the side, so that you get them now. And you see, the actual Messiah had to be pierced in the side. What is he doing? He's fulfilling those lambs, or those lambs of the sacrifice. So he had to be pierced in the side in, by way of fulfillment. Now, that is also manifested in the universe. You have a planet in the interior heaven. See? What you call in the sky. You have a planet up there called Pluto. See? And scientists have all types of explanation and they have not come up with the right explanation yet. And that planet Pluto has a lot of beautiful rings around it. But the, 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 those scientific observers, astronomers and what else, they are seeing there is a spot in Pluto. You see, a red spot in Pluto, and they have come up with a whole set of explanations. Not understanding the purpose of Yahweh is in the things that he has made. So that spot. That red spot in Pluto represented Yahshua Messiah being pierced in the sky. So for those who walk around, you see, not understanding this creation have a creator. And it's the purpose of the creator that is taking place. And his universe, Yahweh's universe, is tested by the Yahweh and the Son Yahshua Messiah. So Pluto is manifesting that spot where Yahshua Messiah was pierced in the, in the side. See? And you can look at that for yourself and find it. Now you also have. So as I am of that, you also have a other planet outside there in the interior heavens of the sky. See? And he has also beautiful rings around him. And he's called Saturn, representing Lucifer. Beautiful, looking really beautiful, but that planet represent Lucifer. This was carved for that um, and some children. So that planet looks really, really beautiful with all beautiful rings around Saturn representing Satan or Lucifer that was carved for. So this whole creation is really Preaching the gospel, preaching about God and his purpose. Because it takes the natural, Paul speaking to the people, the Romans, it takes the natural to understand the spiritual. He said, For that which may be known of Yahweh is manifested in them. So Yahweh had shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. So what, so that is how you can see 
that truly the actual is the skills in this in the side because you're getting it from the moon. See, you could tell the devil was very handsome. You're getting that from Saturn. See, not no ugly fellow like me. See, he ain't ugly like me. See, very handsome. So they put the piercing in the side. When the piercing inside, the blood and the water came out. They would strike the engine, which is the top of the door, the inside holes, and the rest of the blood in the base. Four points of blood. You see? So you actually don't have one who struck this. You see that from the corners of his head. Must be near in the light and the left hand. Must be near in the feet. Four points of blood. See? Then you have in your body. See? When you eat your food, whatever it may be, see, once it's not synthetic food, because today we have synthetic food, so we have to be careful how we speak, see, for there is certain synthetic food. But if you eat food that comes from the vine, come from an animal or come from the sea. See, that is not synthetic. If it's vegetables, they have to be plucked off of the vine or the tree. It has to die. If it's a chicken, if it's a meat, if it's a pork, you see, you know, some don't eat that. See? If it's a sheep, if it's a goat, Whatever it may be, it had to die, you have to sacrifice it so that you could live. Which is saying the actual Messiah had to sacrifice his blood for us to live spiritually. So if one has to live naturally, something has to die. Which is also showing that the actual Messiah had to die for the sins of the world. So that we might live, enjoy spiritual resurrection of eternal life. And that is manifested in your physical body. So when you eat and your food goes to you, you suffer because you're coming to a small and large intestine, she, you have the ascending, transverse, descending, and signal poles, four points of earth appears in your stomach. See? Testify to the actual inside that four points of blood have to appear in you. See? So now we we reached it, we had reached the point where we were discussing see how after Judas betrayed him, he went and tried to get back the money. See, and they would not take it. See. And he went and he hung himself. And then they took him to the high priest, the Caiaphas. She and then they took him to Pilate. And the high priest and them served the people to accept the rabbis, you see, and to crucify the Ashur. We were also at the point where we discussed. Of various ones came, they found people to underline him. Tell lies about him. See? 
some to the extent the way they spoke the truth, the truth turned into a lie. See, you could say things, and the way you say it, you can incite people. Because he said, destroy this temple, point into his body, and he will raise it up in three days. See, and God put in the scripture lesson that he was speaking about his spiritual body. That this spiritual, this physical body must die. And be buried in one form or the other, so that the spiritual man could rise. So when they let him away, and something else I wanted to bring out, see, in the Bible it says that a man every carving his cross. And I did not want to pass that up. See, when they let him away, there was someone who left him carving his cross. But I have a question for you. Do anybody have you driving your cross? And a simple demonstration of I put my two feet together and I bring my two hands parallel with the ground. See? You head straight up. Doesn't that form the configuration of a cross? See? And isn't my flesh hanging on my cross? We say things. See? And we do not know we are crying. We are walking around with the proof on us. Nobody had to try to flesh around. Whatever condition your flesh is on your cross, you have to bear. If you overweight, you have to bear. See, if you have pain and suffering in your body, body and in your joints, you have to bear it. So you bear your own cross. And someone will tell me. You see, what they will have in the book that the man helped him to grab the cross. See? Then I go into the Bible. Abraham. And two sons. Ishmael and Isaac, one of the one to one, one of the three ones. See, his wife Sarah had difficulty. See, in giving words. But Abraham was promised that he will have a seed or a son coming. From his wife. And that was fulfilled. So here it is, at an appointed time, Yahweh decided he's going to test or examine Abraham's faith. See, he's going to examine if Abraham is going to be obedient or not. So he tells Abraham, he said, take your son, your one son Isaac. See? He said, go and sacrifice him. 
Now you know what somebody has interpreted that to be. They have interpreted that to mean that Yahweh accept human sacrifice, which is not true. That is what they have interpreted that to be. And in today's world, you find it now that people are missing. And it is alleged and suspected that people are being human sacrifice is going on on the face of the earth as we speak. See? She told them to go and sacrifice the one son Isaac. What is she doing? Yahweh is testing Abraham to see if Abraham is obedient. She, she puts him through this. She wakes up the son and tells himself, we have to go and have the sacrifice. So the Bible tells us that Abraham, he had a son and his, uh, some of his workers had been going to the place of the sacrifice. And Isaac is crying the word. Isaac is crying his own word for his own sacrifice. Which is telling you that Yahshua the Messiah, the cross is made of the world, is going to carry his own cross for his own sacrifice. That's all that there is about. It's all about. See? So when we reach the place of the sacrifice, Isaac turns his father and says, I see the words, I see the words, and I see the preparation. But where is the sacrifice? Not knowing that he is a sacrifice. See? And Isaac was bound or tied up of him it as a sacrifice supposed to be. And place on the altar with the word. See? And Abraham with a heavy hand, mourning his son's death. See? And he's obedient to Yahweh to the end. See? And he comes down with the blade, and he had the blade coming down to sacrifice his own son. And in Abraham's heart, Abraham himself is seeing himself psychologically dead. So Abraham goes through psychologically a death and a burial in himself. Because he can't see himself living after he has to do his own son. It's his own son. But he has to be obedient. He's not questioning now. And with a heavy heart and a pain in his heart, he's going to kill his son. And then Yahweh had the angel stay his hand as he's coming down with the devil. And the angel said, Look, there's a ram caught in the ticket. Sacrifice that. See? Tested Abraham, but what is happening is showing you. Yahshua the Messiah, the Lamb and Yahweh, is only such one to be sacrificed. So right here, when his hand was still, and he no longer had to kill his son, his only son, see, from a natural standpoint, he went to a psychological what? resurrection. So he went to a death, a burial, and a resurrection. In his heart's mind. So all that is pointing to is the action of the cycle of the coming. The only son of Yahweh. And Yahweh will sacrifice his only son for the sins of the world. That is love. That is what love is. See, his only son sacrifice for the sins of mankind. So 
had to cry. Isaac had to cry with his own word. Yahshua had to cry with his own word. Because the cross made up the world. So nobody will help you. See? And the answer was I was saying, she recorded her in King James Version in red letter edition. See, what is red letter is the exact words of Yahshua himself. And he's there and he's saying, search the scriptures. That's what he's telling the multitudes. He tells them, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, but they are there to testify of me. So that is what I am showing you. The scriptures which are the Lord of Prophets is and have always been testifying of God from Messiah. What he's going to come in and do in his ministry. See? So that is what we show you. So, so those who are reading the Bible and they see things in it and they say this, this is what I am reading is a good thing to be doing on my church or my religion. That shows you have no life, no understanding in it. You have no understanding of the purpose of the hour. So if you tell the people they need to be water baptized, you don't know the purpose of the hour. You have no knowledge of it. You have no knowledge of the purpose of salvation. If you have to tell me to have communion, the Lord suffer the Eucharist, that says you have no understanding of the purpose of the hour. In righteousness. See? See, there's two purposes operating on the face of the earth. The purpose of righteousness and the purpose of unrighteousness. Or the mystery of righteousness. More, more, more um, directly put. And the mystery of unrighteousness. See? And the two of them will keep walking alongside one another. One is going to give you to the life, the purpose of righteousness. And the purpose of unrighteousness, you will take in heaven eternal damnation. Some may not believe that. But whether you believe it or not, that doesn't mean to say anything changes. See? You don't have to believe that the sun comes up. See? In the morning, for the sun to come up. Whether you believe it or not, the sun is going to rise in the morning. So too is the purpose of the hour. It's going to complete itself whether you agree or not. So we get Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Which by now some of us are supposed to be able to repeat by heart. But when Yahshua the Messiah was being criticized for not keeping the Sabbath and healing people at the Sabbath day, 
So if you keep in the Lord today, any part of it, he said you have to keep the 613. And after, if you can keep it, 613, he said you just live it by it, you have no salvation to get it. See?
So then we found out that he was taken and he was led in every way. He was stripped naked. See, when you have to kill the lamb to eat it, you have to take off all the covering that is on the lamb. All the wool that is on the lamb, you have to Share your. In other words, the lamb is made naked. So don't get into the lamb's naked. So he being the true lamb of God, he has to be naked. You have to take off all his clothes. See? And remember, that lamb is to be roasted with fire. To roast means to ridicule somebody, to severely ridicule, back or embarrass, that is a rose. To bring somebody down to the lowest that you could bring them, that's a rose. So remember they had to roast the lamb. So they criticize him, they mock him. That is why they had to say mock him. Because that lamb back then in Egypt had to be roasted. So they roasted. 
They mock him. They spit at him. Remember that they that the man don't give with bitter herbs. So that is why they have to give him the vinegar to drink. He's all, everything he's doing is perfect. Finishing the work. See? He's finishing that work. He's finishing everything that was done in the Lord of Prophets. Then he was a letter, letter. Now the next thing we can, you see, that they crucified him. And they say early in the morning, Sunday morning, you see, on the third day, he rose from the dead. And there was some religious leader on the YouTube, and he seemed to have been expressing to himself, you see, that he found out that the whole thing about Yahshua or Jesus um, died, buried, and resurrected the third day. And they said the third day was Sunday. But yes, he was crucified on Friday. And he said it is not adding up. When he comes to talk, he can be right. So to him, he gets this great revelation. And suddenly he realized to himself to the way he responded. See, that it cannot be right if, and he's saying, Jesus, if he rose on the third day, then he had to write for him, raise on the, on, the, on the Monday. But certainly not this Sunday morning. That is his contention that the Bible is added up. So I have said in previous lectures that the book is seen with seven seeds. That no man in heaven and no man in the world was able to lose the seed. So when they read it with the carnal mind, obviously, it would not add up. But if they were weakened to go to the Lord of the Prophets, it will show itself the revelation is there. She and I started with it this morning. See, I read about how in Genesis, how Yah, when he put the sun, the moon, and the stars in the interior heaven, he says for signs and for seasons. Is to divide the day from the night. And the evening and the morning was the first day. See? And if one take that by that, and you go back, you will find that the light he called day and the darkness he called night. So every time there's light, that is day. And everything time there is darkness that is light. That is that is natural. So when the children of Israel, when you had the nine plague of darkness before the plague of death, the children of Israel was in light, in motion, and the Egyptian was in darkness. So that light I means there was any day. And fear of them, and there was any night. So that was a day within a day. So when they came out of Egypt, that was a day within a day. When Pharaoh and his host went behind them on the third day. And they go through the Red Sea, they have to go through the Red Sea. Remember, they came to, what, to the Red Sea on the third day. On the third day, they 
which direction it was already returning. See? And what when Pharaoh and his force came behind the children of Israel? Yahweh is Yahshua who led them. He was a pillar of fire by day and a pillar a pillar of by day and a pillar of fire by night. He was light to the children of Israel and he was darkness to the Egyptians. That's a phenomenon. Night and darkness to be a so that is the day of the day. See? So when we go to the crucifixion of Yahshua and Zachar, see, we will see the same thing in phenomenal day. We have been marched with the 27th chapter. And when the morning was come, all the chief priests and the elders of the people 
So council means they are sure to put them to death. And when they have done them, they let them away and deliver him on the countryside. Therefore, when they, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Who will you that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is Yahshua? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. So Pilate knew that had reason them, for envy they had delivered him. Yes, go on to them. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Barabbas. Into the, the, um, the sands, 
You will see David is going to be using these same words, my girl, my girl, why hast thou forsaken me? Psalms 22 and 1. My girl, my girl, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from me, from helping me? And from the world? And from the words of my Lord. So now, if you recognize it, right down to the last word he says, you see. You're going to find out he's fulfilling. See? He's fulfilling everything to the jot and to the tittle. All that the Father gave him to fulfill, he's fulfilling it. See, somebody will tell you, you know, he was um, in such distress. No, he was fulfilling. See? So when he He bowed his head in his locks and he says, It's finished. See, he was already saying that in the garden of Gethsemane, which I read to you. That he's saying, I have, I have finished the work which thou hast given me to do, which complete the law and the prophets, bringing it to an end, bringing that old covenant to an end, so that through my blood I could give them the new testament. I have already fulfilled it so long. It's to shed the blood, his blood, to cleanse the world from the sin that goes my heart and for me. Hmm? So we see from the sixth. From the sixth hour, there was darkness over. Or the land onto the ninth hour. So from the sixth hour to the ninth hour on the Friday was darkness. So we have on the Friday from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. So from the sixth Tonight is darkness. From the sixth hour to the ninth hour. So remember, he came to Friday in the morning. See? At the Friday. Then we have a night from 12 to 3. It's 
tonight. So we have from three to six on the same Friday, we have died. So we have light and we have darkness. And we have light and we have darkness. So on the Friday we have two days, a day within a day. See? We have a day within a day on the Friday. Phenomenal day. Just like what we had. See? When you had the bathroom, you had that phenomenal day when you came out of Egypt and we went to the Red Sea. So he is fulfilling those phenomenal things, and we have a very little day. So you have within, within Friday itself, we have two days. See? And then you have Saturday. See? From 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. night. From 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. night. That's a day. And then he goes the third day. He has made that atonement for all of us. 
and now he's tabernacling for those who have his knowledge and his understanding in them and those who have his spirit resurrected in them in righteousness he's tabernacling in those vessels to now see so he has already cleansed the sanctuary which is the world by the shedding of his blood so with these words I say hallelujah. Thank each and every one for listening. Do have a good day. Stay safe. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you forthwith before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the holy might of the Lord heaven, to Yahshua Messiah, our sovereign, belongs glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and for all times. Let us all say, Hallelujah. To have a, to stay safe and have a good day.